Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and we've invited uh, the publisher of the Podium Media, Mr. Adimola Akimbola. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. I'm glad to be here again. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, start with uh, the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. The headline, Ohaneze ACF Afenifere Groups Reacts as FG Arrests Arraigns Kanu. How he was arrested, according to Malami, and Kanu explains why he ran away. Above the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, send bill on restructuring to National Assembly, Afeniferi tells Buhari. Ogun will experience flooding between July and September. Government alerts residents. Makinde sacks chief of staff, 17 commissioners. We will borrow to fund 20% stake in Dangote's refinery. That's according to the NNPC. Federal government extends NIN SIM linkage deadline to July 26th. Super TV CEO murder. Police yet to contact us on Chidinma. That's according to Unilag. Three killed, ten injured as gunmen in police uniforms attack or your community. Traditional ruler says, my people live in fear. Kaduna crisis, our strike this time will be total. That's according to NLC says latest threats by Elrufai is provocative. And uh, those are the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. All right, the Daily Sun, the big one here, says how Interpol nabbed IPOB leader in Europe. We intercepted and brought him back with foreign collaboration, says Malami. Court remands him in DSS custody, adjourns trial to July 26. Um, I fled Nigeria to save my life, says Namdi Khan. And, uh, of course, Mbazulike is saying government must be cautious. Property seizure. Okorocha begs court to set aside IMO panel decisions. Reps to pass supplementary budget, PIB, Electoral Act Amendment in two weeks. And mass defection hits PDP in Senate. Zamfara governors, uh, uh, lawmakers, dump party. Uh, Songwo Lu launches Jigi Bola free uh, site program for 250,000 residents. A friend of her is in the news this morning saying restructure Nigeria now to avoid civil war. Mobilize fake core members, uh, face sanctions, NYSE warns varsities and orders. And also PDP governors and others who decamp to APC lack conscience, says Nyesom Wiki. And moving on to the next newspaper, The Daily Independent. CSOs, lawyers, others urge speedy and fair trial of Kanu. Ask federal government to stop pampering bandits, terrorists. Why I escaped from Nigeria, IPOB leader. Court remands him in DSS facility. Adjourns trial to July 26, 27. And Malami explains how they arrested Kanu. Secundus links PDP governor's defection to intimidation. Party reps kick as two lawmakers defect. Zamfara senator resigns from PDP. NNPC explains 20% stake in Dangote refinery. 14 years after, Senate may pass PIB tomorrow, reps in two weeks. Ex-South African President Zuma sentenced to 15 months in jail. CVR, INEC receives 42,211 online applications within 24 hours. Oshimbajo to interface with UN on food security for Nigerians. And lastly, on the Daily Independence, Buni declares Matawale leader of Zamfara APC dissolves state ESCO. Right now on the Punch newspapers, EFCC fraud cases, 1,000 others to start afresh. Five of my cases will start afresh, says EFCC counsel. Judge handling 2006 case afresh, promoted. Also this morning, uh, electricity subsidy gulps 30 billion naira per month, says the federal government. Petrol should be more than 280 naira per litre, says Kiari. And also, Namdikanu's arrest, ACF demands caution. Archbishop alleges woman trapped IPOB leader. INEC receives 42,211 online applications within 24 hours of CVR. And NYSE threatens sanctions as JAM alleges fake mobilization certificates. Matawale emerges Zamfara APC leader. Senators, reps and others defect. And uh, we can also see here uh, federal government uh, team NARD in three-hour meeting to avert doctor's strike. 
NLC rebukes Eurofi, plans total industrial action in Kaduna. And we can also see uh, 24 Ogun communities get a eviction notice over impending flooding. I, th I think I'll stop there on the punch uh, newspapers this morning. Um, lastly, we have The Guardian. Disbelief, shock, trail IPOB leaders arrest, rearrangement. Metawale finally joins APC. Federal government's $4 billion stake in Dangote refinery. Senate passes PIB tomorrow, but Biamila promises in two weeks. Nigerians task judiciary to emulate South Africa as Zuma goes to jail. Makinde sacks commissioners other aides. And lastly, on The Guardian, Sonwolu launches Jigibola free site program for 250,000 residents. Mr. Akimbala, welcome again. All right, there's been, there's been lots of reactions from different quarters um, on the arrest of Namdi Kanu and with people urging for fair trial uh, in this matter. What's your perspective about um, the covert nature of the arrest, the extradition and the trial um, to commence July 26th? Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, I mean, a very simple clarification. Kanu was not extradited, it was rendition. There are two different things. Uh, rendition is different from extradition. Extradition is when you go through the complicated legal process to get someone arrested and um, brought back to the country. Rendition is when you bypass all of that through a collaborative feature, which is what uh, the federal government has done. And um, having said that, I want to believe that the president is trying to put into action some of the very strong words he used last time. He granted an interview to RSCV. Remember, he said um, he will be dealing with them in the language that they understand. I believe that Khan has been arrested, brought back to serve as a scapegoat, to serve as a teacher. Now, there are so many perspectives. Is he guilty? Why hasn't government arrested other people? And I really want us to. Um, go by the law. He's been charged with treasonable felony and other charges. I mean, and what does the law say? What has Kano done? Kano has consistently mobilized the people against the government. He's spoken words, he's it, 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 published, and he's it, done so many things to incite the people. Now, you want to ask, what about Shuwari? What about Sunday? What about even a fairly fairly day. Okay? When you keep saying a structure order of the war, that is incitement. And I said last week that the rule of law has broken that in Nigeria. Personally, Kano deserves to go on trial. Okay? He shouldn't have jumped bail. And I think uh, Senator uh, Abadebe will be the happiest man today. Okay? So, having said that, why? And other people not been arrested. Kanu has a date with the law. On July 26th, his trial will be resumed. And I totally support calls that he should, he should, be, uh, he, he should enjoy a speedy and fair trial. Because the way Kanu's trial goes, it tell me so many things. Especially there have been threats, there have been calls um, from Rwandese and other regional groups. Everybody is watching how it goes. We go a long way in determining how other things will happen. Now, Lagos is going to host the O, I think, on July 3rd or 4th. I will be surprised if he is not arrested. Because right now, the government seems ready to crack down on all those who are calling for restructuring. But that's not the way to go about it. This course will continue. If you don't allow people to say those things openly, then they will go into the inner agencies of their homes and issue threats. My own concern is that at each stage of this, the rule of law must be respected, rule of law must be allowed to prevail. Okay? So I, 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 I have read in so many groups, I have appeared to so many messages yesterday that government is just trying to play to the gallery. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Kano deserves to go on trial. But like I said, let us be fair to him. Okay, let's be fair to him. He deserves to go on trial. Other people, as soon as they cross the line, they should also be made to face the law. 
we can achieve our activity for 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 for, for structuring without destroying the country, without incitement, without um, reasonable actions. This can be achieved, and the only instrument that we have is law. The law is the only legal approach that we can. But any other alternative is secession. Any other alternative is treason. I think we need to get that clear. Anybody who is calling for the country to be to 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 to, to um, disintegrate, calling on people to go up in arms against government, is practically looking for trouble for himself. Myself. So let's put that in perspective. Canada deserves to go on trial. What happens during the trial is what everybody is watching. The whole world is watching, not just Nigerians. Okay, because in the past one month, the Southeast has been on a serious attack. And you can be sure that now that Kama has been arrested, these attacks will escalate. So it's very important that government should give him fair trial in the interest of justice. All right. Um, that's, that's, that's my view. All right. Hopefully, we might touch on this a lot later. But let's go to uh, yeah. uh, the continuous voter registration. Annex says they received uh, more than 40,000. Um, entries, online applications uh, since CVR started. Uh, you know, is this a sign that there's more and more Nigerians wanting to be part of uh, the electoral process? And, you know, will we be able to achieve, you know, higher uh, registered voters and uh, higher voting numbers in the next elections? Yes, definitely. It's a sign of good things to come. But I do sincerely hope that INEC is ready and INEC has capacity to handle this. If you look at the trend in previous elections, we've not been achieving decent figures. Okay, when you look at the total number of votes cast in 2015 election and 2018 election, it does not even represent up to 30 percent of the voting population. So yes, it's I mean it's a good thing that more people are showing interest, but INEC must strengthen its capacity. INEC must must be committed to a transparent process. Okay, in all of this, people will not be disenfranchised. You don't want to get to the police station that day and you don't find your name on the register. You don't want to make sure that your name should not appear in a different police unit and stuff like that. So I think we should put this on in order. People have always been willing, they've always been interested in voting. But at the end of the day, and one line for Nigerians is that Nigerians will do everything to get the voting card because they know that tomorrow the state government will tie to so many things. So there's a difference between people going to register and people actually coming on to vote. They're two different things. A lot of people have their voters register, I mean, their voters card. They don't vote. They will, they, they will hold it simply because they will need something from government where they will see the produce of voters um, card. So a lot of mobilization needs to take place, a lot of sense needs to take place. And look, it's not just enough to register. You need to come out of that day to vote. All right. Um, the um, signing of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill also, do, is it important that we, you know, continue to have that conversation? Because it wasn't signed in 2019 because of how close it was to the elections. But this is two yes. years after. It's still not signed. Politicians know what they're doing. And I would be surprised if that act is not signed, even before the next election. One way or the other, they will bring obstacles. Anything that tries to achieve transparency and probity in Nigeria never gets done. In most cases, it, it, it ends up not being done. Look at the petroleum industry bill. After 14 years, we just be told that it will be signed by the Senate. Okay, anything that attempts to make things fair, equitable, it, 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 it never gets done. 14 years is a long time. Okay, so I won't be surprised if the electoral act is also not um, fully signed by the time we go to the next election because there are some aspects of the electoral act that will help us, that will help the electoral process to ensure that things are done in a more transparent manner. Okay, so I, 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 I won't be surprised if it's not signed, but I pray that it gets signed. All of these things, there are elements of democracy. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be open, it has to be transparent. The, the will of the people must must reflect in the outcome of election, which has never been, has never been in Nigeria. All right. So people, uh, yeah.
Okay, so I'm um, talking about politics. There seems to be a wave of affections from uh, the opposition party PDP to the All Progressives Congress. Uh, we saw that with Ben Ayade, with David Umahi, and with Bello Matawale yesterday. And uh, we on the Indep Daily Independent newspaper, some headlines say Buni declares Matawale leader of Zamfara, APC dissolves state escorts, and. Uh, Secondus has linked this PDP's governor's defection to intimidation. Um, do you think that's what it is, that they're intimidated? I don't think they are being intimidated by anybody. They are just taking position ahead of the state election. And of course, um, people believe that if you're an APC, the EFC may not come after you. No. The governors know what they do. They know the shady deals that they're getting getting involved in. But the question you want to ask is what's different between PDP and APC? It's not different. It's not different between the two parties. So anybody moving from one party to another, they are doing that in search of power. In search of power. As I only knows that the way things are going, PDP is being gradually decimated. And in 2023, PDP will not be strong enough to stop any resistance unless Nigerians decide that we are enough to APC, which you will expect in the country where people um, are being sincere. And, and there's no reason why the APC government should be re-elected either at the centre or in, in most of the state. But then the question is, is PDP a better alternative? Yes, there's an answer in the air. So yes, there will still be more defections, uh, but I, 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 I think if there's any intimidation, the governors are the ones intimidating themselves. Okay, They are the ones getting um, jittery about what will happen when Bali leaves, that the ones trying to position themselves for, for relevant positions in the APC ahead of 2023. Okay, and then uh, on the punch this morning, two of the stories uh, there's uh, talking electricity and petrol. Um, it says on the top of the screen, electricity subsidy gulps 30 billion naira per month, says the federal government. And uh, Mela Kiari is saying petrol should be more than 280 naira per litre. Um, it, you know, kind of sounds like, you know, testing the waters for a likely increment of uh, uh, both electricity tariffs and uh, petrol uh, price once again. Um, you know, yeah. how likely is this? And, you know, do you think the Nigerian government, you know, would consider the fact that a lot of Nigerians can't afford um, higher electricity price uh, tariffs rather than petrol? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the regulation of the power sector which was about to by Jonathan administration is one of the um, biggest frauds in Nigeria because five, six years down the line, nothing has changed. Or rather, things have changed for, 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 for the worst. Because what we simply did was to unborn to Nepal, dismember Nepal, and hand over the constituent units to friends and cronies. People who have no competence, people who, who lack like capacity to do the job they have to do. And that's where we are. We are. Yeah, so, so 30 billion is a lot of money. And what that means is that there's so much inefficiency in the system. Okay? But people are not enjoying power supply. People are not paying their bills. I mean, it, 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 um, it beggars belief. Okay? And you can't get any time for it at least this. Okay? So, yes, most likely. We may witness an increase in electricity tariff, and also even for 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 for, for fuel, we've always said it until we start processing our crude ourselves, until we're able to reduce the cost of processing, the cost of importation, we don't we won't have any control over the price. Okay, if the exchange rate goes up, it's going to affect the cost of processing, the cost of bringing um, refined crude back to the country. Okay, so that's why we are all legally waiting for Daniel to defend it uh, to, to, to start. But that's not going to solve our problem of finance. It's going to take time. So between now and the end of the year, let's pray some. Let it calm. Hmm. But this is simple, simple economics. I do not know for how long government will, will carry this 30 billion on the subsidy. I do not know for how long government will keep telling us that we're not paying fair price for gas. For how long? And with, a, with an economy that is, that is lying prostrate, that's not really doing too well, government has gone borrowing to fund critical infrastructure projects. So I, 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 I see something happening in that area before the end of the year, if government have the courage. So that's another thing. 
the courage to be able to do the right thing. First of all, cut off, scale down a lot of inefficiencies, okay? Prevent smuggling, which, which is a big problem. I do not believe that engineers are consuming the amount of refined petroleum products that, when we, that, that, that the um, government claims that they are consuming. A lot goes to neighboring countries. We have not done anything about that. Okay, so if consumption increases, absolute consumption figures keep increasing, then there's no way government can keep the fuel price at the current levels. Talking about that Dangote ref talking about that Dangote yeah. refinery, uh, Millie Carey mentioned um, yesterday that you know, he's been talking about how the government plans to fund uh, their investment in NNPC. And the story here is on the Daily Independent. It says NNPC explains 20% stake in Dangote Refinery. And they say that they're in talks with banks because they feel that the Dangote yeah. Refinery is very profitable and that they're going to borrow money yeah. from banks to fund that. Um, what do you yeah. think about this? Is this the right move? It is. It is. It is because... Um, Energy Refinery is a private sector initiative set up to make profit. It's not going to be a wrong based on sentiment. So NMBC needs to have a stake there, okay? And if they can't come up with the cash, they don't have the money. So they can go to the banks to borrow on very reasonable terms, believing that the returns from the investment will be able to offset the loan. That the refinery is, 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 is an idea that has come at the right time. Okay? It's an idea, it's a project that Nigeria needs critically. And it's a very smart move for the NMBC to open the stake simply because if you don't do that, other countries come to Nigeria, pay better price, refine their crude, and they go to the family will tell you, sorry, we don't have space for you. It's a private sector initiative. And mm. if the NMBC has a stake there, it is meant that the Nigerian government will have. Uh, so, so, so preference in terms of crude processing and stuff like that. So yes, it's a good idea for them to borrow. Um, they, they must have done their arithmetic, they must have put all the plans in, into consideration and it's, it's a good deal. For me, I think it's, 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 a, it's a good move. All right. It's a good move. Let's uh, see yeah. uh, something on the Nation newspapers this morning um, from South Africa now where it says that uh, former President Jacob Zuma has been sentenced to 15 months in prison um, uh, by the court. Uh, there's, of course, uh, the discussions concerning the strength of institutions in South Africa. Um, and, of course, you know, these, this is not a you know, story that you would likely see in many African countries. Uh, so quickly react or respond to that. Um, is this meant to be something that you know, a lot of other African countries should be able to look at and, and, and um, you know, maybe take lessons from. Well, why are you shy away from mentioning Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> this is something that Nigeria should take a cue from. And I don't see this happening in Nigeria. It, I mean, that's, it's, it's not going to happen. Because if Nigeria were to be a nation where such things will happen, President Jonathan, President Robertson George would be in jail by now including all of those who served in those governments, because they, they, they brought us to where we are today. Okay, so yes, that is salute to a country where the laws will work fairly, salute to a country where the institutions are independent, salute to a country where people know that leaders must lead by examples, and when they falter, they have to face the law. Okay, so even if tomorrow he spent one month and is pardoned, they've sent a very strong signal out to say, look, you can't just misbehave as a leader. And I look forward to that day that a president will come in and say, look, we're going to prove this. And if they are found guilty, they are going to be jailed. Okay, so I, 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 I look forward to when we have that courage, when we have that boldness to be able to say, this man, you are going to jail. So, Nigeria, we are light years away. We are far from that. Yeah, but is, is there... You know, just like Fala like said, party-party government, arranging government, that will be running Nigeria. 
Yeah, but, um, but but it it also you know and it's, it's once again on the you know conversation concerning the strength of institutions because you know it's there's a possibility that while he was president he may have also played his uh, you know tried to weaken these institutions you know to protect himself and that's a very similar picture with what we see here in Nigeria where the judiciary and the national assembly seem to be working for the president or working for the person mm -hmm. in. Um, Aso Rock. You know, you hear statements from the army saying that they, uh, you know, would defend the president instead of saying that they would defend mm -hmm. the country and, and sure. you know, the allegiances yeah. to the president instead of to the country. And so, um, how can we ever um, get to a place where these institutions understand that they exist for the country and not for a person? We need to put at the helm of affairs people of honor, people who have self esteem. A lot of leaders in Nigeria do not, do not have self-esteem. They, 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 they know that most of them do not deserve the appointments that they have today. Okay? Most of them believe that that appointment is due to political patronage. So the day we begin to appoint competent people, people who have track records of performance, put them in charge of these institutions. The whole world will know that these people, they are not malleable, they can't be pushed around anyhow. And the process of strengthening the strength will begin. As long as we put into offices men and women who lack integrity, who are not competent enough for the position that they, they that have been entrusted upon them, they will always pander to the wishes of whoever has appointed them. And that is the easiest way to destroy institutions. Okay? You put someone there simply because he's a cousin of Mr. President or he's an ill of Mr. President, others do not respect him. And a lot of things go wrong. So it starts with appointing the right people who are qualified, who are competent, who, who, who have visible records of impressive performance that the whole world can see. Imagine putting Dr. Akumi Adeshina in any public office today. We all know that he has proved himself on the global stage. Compare him with half of those who are in uh, Mr. President's cabinet today. Okay, Most of them, they are then representing their parties that they are representing their state, that they are representing their godfathers. What kind of situation can those ones run? They won't run any situation. So yes, we are right. It's, it's, it's a function of having the right people managing the, those institutions. Institutions exist on paper. The human elements are not taken for granted because human beings are the ones that will ensure that the laws are implemented, that the standard operating procedures are followed to the letter. Okay, so when you have wrong effects um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the right goals, that's what you get. It's not as if South Africa is only a perfect system, but to some extent, the foundation that the apartheid government laid is difficult for subsequent government to dismantle. Yeah, all right. Probably that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you know it's um, you know where we might also mention the controversy concerning the nomination of uh, Loretta Ono Chair as uh, an commissioner. Uh, but I, I want us to I want us to um, you know quickly with the time that we have also speak on uh, something that I was uh, saying earlier. Uh, the the of course the Namdi Kanu story once again. Uh, the way that the mechanism came together to, in order to get him arrested. Um, you know, we're not sure 100% how it was done. Um, but does that also show uh, that there is a huge possibility that a lot of these bandit leaders across the country um, shouldn't be so hard to pick up or to arrest or to find if you know, the government was truly serious about finding them wherever they are? Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that statement, if government is serious about finding them, okay? And that's what people are saying. If you go to this extent to get Kano rearrested, then it shouldn't be difficult for you to arrest other people who probably have done worse things, okay? I'm not sure Kano has directly um, accounted for, for anybody's death, but a lot of bandits, a lot of criminals have killed people. We need to go after them. So yes, absolutely. Like Kano, like Shore, like Ibu, anybody who steps out of, um, who oversteps the legal boundaries allowed should, should, should face the law. So, government should not be selective. It's okay, Kano should come back and face trial, but other people too need 
to either be arrested or a bribe done or something needs to be done. Because the justice must not only be done, it must be seen to us be done. Okay, and Mr. Akimbala. Yeah. Okay, on, on the Nigerian Tribune newspaper, there's a story about this mm. Kaduna crisis. It says, uh, according to the NLC, that their strike this time would be total. They actually put out a statement saying Kaduna workers are not slaves and that they have rights. And uh, Erufai then ha went on to, um, rather, he, they say that Erufai's threat is provocative. But NLC is insisting that they have a right to strike and that falls under their mandate. If we saw the level of shutdown in Kaduna State that we had a few weeks ago, they tried to negotiate, that didn't work, and NLC now is saying that this time around it will be total. What kind of impact do you think that might have in, in Kaduna? And, and why exactly um, has the government failed to reinstate these workers um, allegedly sacked in their numbers? Remember we talked about this last week and I said, they have to arrogant um, stance on this issue we only prolong the crisis. Okay. At the end of the day, they will often need to go back to the uh, negotiation table to discuss. As long as government believes that doing the right thing for workers is a favor who we'll continue to have problems like this, okay? If the strike goes ahead in the totality as been promised, it's going to affect the economy of the state government, it's going to affect the security situation, okay? It's going to affect even the way government business is done. So I I I I find it difficult to understand what all the is trying to achieve with this. Yes, of course, government is also not is seen to be weak, but I believe that in between government position and labor's position lies the solution to this problem. And the earlier the solution is found, the better. Okay, because at the end of the day. The strike will go ahead, the economy of the state will be affected, and these workers will still be paid. And what you don't want to grant them now, you will still eventually accede to their demand. So why not the grant standing? Mm. It, it's, it, it, it's bad enough, yeah. All right, Mr. Kimbala. Thank, Thank you very much uh, for joining us this morning Thank on you. The Breakfast. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I love you. Okay, so we'll go on a break here and we'll return uh, for today in history. Stay with us.